Shreem and Anisha Khan are going to present our capstone project, which is a particle injected in front of the design. Nowadays, the interaction between solid objects and granular flow has been a part in aerodynamical as well as in practical applications, such as a uh, car going through the dust storm or an aircraft going through the uh, debris, uh, as well as the applications it sent to agriculture and architecture as well. Although the substantial research is mainly focused on test granular flow around an obstacle, and even the ones that incorporate the wood granular flow, they don't have any experimental data, uh, experimental results for it. So to address um, this uh, issue, our aim uh, is to design a low-speed wind tunnel that will incorporate a dust feeder. And uh, correspondingly, we will derive a simulation. We have direct, direct Right, simulation data that focuses on the uh, dilute granular flaw inside the wind tunnel. And finally, uh, we will explore this correlation between the particle uh, and flow properties. Um, first of all, let's understand what are wind tunnels and what types of wind tunnels exist. So, there are basically tools that help uh, to make a dynamic analysis of certain objects that are being tested. And with the result, according to the results, design of the can be done. And another essential thing to mention about the tunnel is that they create real world uh, physical testing opportunity. Uh, and uh, as I said, there are um, many types, there are different, uh, there are two main ways to categorize wind tunnels. The first one is based on the speed, um, the air force rate in the wind tunnel. Uh, which is compared to the Mach number, and correspondingly, there are subsonic, transonic, supersonic, and hypersonic wind tunnels. And another way to categorize the wind tunnels is based on their uh, structure, whether the airflow is circulating in the, in the tunnel or not. So, uh, in the case of closed loop, uh, both of them have their advantages and disadvantages, such as the closed loop wind tunnel has higher flow quality, but has uh, higher construction costs, and it's complex, while open loop wind tunnel. Uh, is, uh, has low cost in terms of construction, but it's noisier. Um, according to, according, based on the advantages and disadvantages, disadvantages, and also the incorporation of the particles in the wind tunnel, the closed loop wind tunnel would be impossible. So we decided to go with the open loop wind tunnel. Uh, and talking about the constraints that we had, the first one is space and size, as uh, we aim to design a tabletop wind tunnel, uh, and the particle injection that I already mentioned, uh, as well as the equipment, as we were limited to the available plant here, and we had to construct the remaining part, remaining part of the wind tunnel according to the uh, available plan. Um, so let's first understand what are the main parts of the wind tunnel. Uh, first, we have construction section, or uh, then the test section where uh, the object is being tested, the diffuser, and uh, the fan. Going over each one of them, uh, construction section is responsible for the uh, for increasing the airspeed inside the tunnel. It has a narrow and wide ends, and the ratio between the screw decides how many times the airspeed will increase, and it's also uh, described by the continu uh, equation of continuity. And the literature tells us that for uh, subsonic wind tunnels, which is in our case, uh, the ratio should be from 6 to 9 times. For our application, we need as uh, fast uh, speed in the test section as possible. So we decided to go with a uh, ratio of 9. Uh, and to better understand how it works, if we have, for example, 10 meters per second of air and take the uh, construction, we will have a 90 meter per second going off speed. And as for the length, it should be around a hydraulic radius. Uh, for the curve of the construction station, uh, there are some um, conditions that it has to meet. Uh, first, the non-uniformity exiting the construction, uh, construction section uh, has to be uh, around 0.5% of the boundary layer. Uh, and it has to, its length has to be as minimal as possible and give us minimal uh, boundary layer thickness. Uh, the uh, equation, uh, several equations were taken, and this is an uh, order equation uh, that was met this uh, condition. Uh, is presented here. Um, uh, it, was, it was done by James uh, James H. And also, its uh, parameters are uh, described in the figure. 
For the test section, it has a very simple design. Uh, from the literature, we know that it's uh, like to fill in this region where there is a uh, hydraulic diameter. And for this part, it's just the length, uh, it's just, it's, it's just the uh, size. Um, and for the diffuser, um, there are two main components that we need to decide. Which first is the in, uh, angle of which it's expanding, which is this one. And it should be from 5 to 10 percent, uh, depending on the weight. And also, its length is uh, decided by this equation, where D is in LR side and plus D. And secondly, in AR is the area ratio of the this part and this part. And um, as we told earlier, fan is a very essential part of the design. So uh, this fan was selected for our need, uh, for the need um, mentioned before. Uh, this one provides us 15 meters per second in the inlet part, the side of dimensions, and hence uh, this design was, uh, this is the sketch of the first design uh, made uh, based on the fan and other uh, theories. To ensure that we have enough velocity, sufficient velocity, in the design uh, requirements are met, uh, CFD analysis with ANSYS fluent software was conducted, and several assumptions and settings were um, were set up, such as, such as transient flow, which would help us to uh, examine the particle flow at a certain time, uh, at a certain point of time, as well as turbulent model was chosen to be k omega, and the air was assumed to be incompressible in the wind tunnel. And finally, as the we had the particle incorporation, a discrete uh, phase um, model injection was chosen. Here we can see two contours. Uh, one is for velocity and the other one is for pressure. In the test section, uh, as can be seen, uh, we reach 140 meters per second, which is almost nine times the inlet velocity, which is 15 meters per second. And uh, in the dynamic pressure contour, we see that as, um, in the end of the diffuser, we have 2,500 Pascal dynamic pressure which is a problem. To address this issue, uh, we conducted several more experiments based on the theoretical basis. And um, the diffuser was elongated while we have the same um, velocity in the test section, 140 meters per second. The uh, pressure, the dynamic pressure, gets almost uh, zero pascals. Um, and not forgetting about the uh, dust sphere replacement. Uh, here, um, Somewhere in the contraction section will be placed a dust sphere, and uh, the particles will be injected and uh, become the part of the airflow. And here they will hit the testing object, and uh, with the help of balance uh, system, the uh, aerodynamic properties, the change of the uh, aer aerodynamic properties will be um, recorded. Oh, okay, and uh, here. <coughs> You can see two examples of dust sphere runs, one with a shorter and the other one is uh, with a longer, longer length. While with the, with the first case, uh, we have some uniformity, uniformity in the diffuser, and uh, with the longer uh, diffuser, uh, with the longer dust sphere, the, uh, in the diffuser, the non uniformity is way less. Um, um, so, uh, based on this uh, result, we decided to go with a uh, long, longer dust meter. Uh, and uh, to test, to understand how particles behave in the wind tunnel, uh, several uh, experiments were conducted. And to uh, see the limitation to which extent we can uh, have the diameters for the particles, here we can see that for uh, different uh, sizes of diameters, the flow is uh, normal, but when we uh, reach to the 5 millimeters in the diameter, the particles start to hit the ground because they are too heavy and the wind cannot carry them. So we decided to have the limitation and not use particles bigger than 3 millimeters. Um, uh, so to better understand how velocity is dependent on uh, the size of the particle, here we can see the uh, plot representing their dependency. It is an exponential like uh, dependency and as we can see for bigger uh, particles we have a smaller maximum velocities inside the tunnel. Uh, and uh, we can see the part, uh, density of the particles, the range is from uh, 100 to 4,000 micrometers. 
and the maximum velocity which the particles have 115 meters per second. That's for the finest one. Um, but uh, the velocity is not dependent only on the uh, diameter. It's also dependent on the density of the particle. So another experiment was conducted while we kept the diameter of the particle constant and changed the densities. And as you can see, the uh, relationship is um, uh, relationship is inverse, and for bigger, uh, for uh, denser particles, we have lower uh, velocities, and also uh, we can see the ranges from 900 to 4,000. Um, and uh, yeah, highest. Okay. Uh, so um, uh, at least two gave us uh, gave us in, uh, insights of how these two affect each other, but uh, we needed to understand how their relationship is and how uh, they affect the. Uh, velocity more uh, accurately. So uh, we conducted, uh, we, we have conducted an experiment for each pair of velocity and density. And here is the heat map showing the data uh, for the maximum velocity for each particle. And this uh, heat map can give us an insight about the high and low uh, our velocity regions. So if we need some uh, parameters uh, of the particle, uh, no, uh, the particle speed, we can see where the speed is higher and uh, take particles from that range. Uh, also, it gives us a par uh, comparative analysis to understand uh, how velocity is dependent on e each uh, parameter. And to choose the minimum conditions for our experiment. Here you can see the final result of the end and then the dust here and the test section and the test here. Uh, here is the simulation of the particles that are injected from here and they become a part of the ball and the test section is and using the diffuser. And uh, in the future work, we aim to build the uh, actual wind tunnel and conduct numerical uh, calculations and derive the numerical models, as well as uh, derive semi-empirical uh, formulation for the particle behavior and how they affect the object that is being tested. Uh, to test an object and compare the numerical uh, results with the experimental data that we have. Uh, to finish, uh, we want to thank our supervisor, uh, Hiracha, uh, Dr. Hiracha, who helped us uh, with his guidance. We uh, got to this successful result. And uh, we want to thank our dear friend and uh, TA, Alex, who, whose enthusiasm kept us going. Uh, and of course, uh, we want to thank our peers and friends and families to encourage encouraged us and kept on the truck. Thank you. to 
incorporate what's outside because right now your boundary condition where you're stopping the computational domain it's called playing God. You decide that the pressure boundary is right there, whereas it actually isn't. So I would suggest you tap on a zone in order to get a better solution there. But wonderful work. I, I really appreciate it. If you can build the tunnel, it will be great. To actually build the tunnel and have something where we can test things uh, and, and get some measurements. Thank you very much. Any further questions? Thank you.